Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all out there in YouTube world and to my friends there in the class. Well, we had a little bit of a glitch this morning and uh, I didn't hit record <laughs> right off. And so we missed the first part of the session. So I'm actually going to post this um, as the first portion of our uh, study again. The part that got totally missed is the fact that now we are in a new week. It's week 22. And uh, we finished last day with Psalm 119. And we are going on to week 22, From Where Shall My Help Come From, is the title of it. I'm just going to read what's in the text. When God's people were serious enough about worship to track all the way to the temple in Jerusalem for one of the annual feasts, where did they look for help on their journey? Where do you look today? Do you look to the Lord for your help? Well, these are important questions to ask and to answer. So I'm going to read what it says here on day one because we're starting a new. Ah, I need my glasses, sorry. This week we will study a series of 15 psalms called the Songs of Ascents, a term that describes the purpose of these psalms, to recite when worshippers ascended to the temple in Jerusalem for the feasts. Ascents refers partly to the topography of the Holy Land, Jerusalem sits on top of the central ridge of mountains that slope downward to the Mediterranean Sea on the west and to the Jordan River Valley and Dead Sea on the east. If you approach Jerusalem from either of these directions, you physically ascend. Additionally, the temple was built on the top of Mount Moriah, where Abraham sacrificed Isaac. So to go to the temple from any part of Jerusalem, you would have to ascend. And thirdly, worshippers had to ascend stairs to get up to the platform that held the temple. As they climbed, they recited these psalms to prepare their hearts for worship. All these psalms are short this week. Compare, well, they're all short compared to 119. <laughs> With the exception of Psalm 132, all the songs of ascents are under 10 verses. Some are as short as three verses, so we'll be covering two or three psalms each day. Today we're reading Psalm 120 and Psalm 121. But before we do that, let's go to prayer. Thank you, Lord, that no matter where we are, you are there. There's nowhere we can go and flee from your spirit, but you're there to guide us and to help us. That thought is very comforting where once when we were in our sin, that was terrifying and that was cause for rebellion and anger. Now, Lord, we find it comforting and we find it strengthening to know that you are there. You are always there watching, helping. And as we learn these Psalms of Ascents, Lord, we just thank you for the day that you've given, that we can go up and worship you. Thank you that you've given us this breath to come up and worship you. So help us. Help us to hear what it is you have us to know about your word today. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, originally in this actual session, our friend Suji has uh, did the reading for us, but uh, I didn't record that, so I'm going to read it for you. Psalm 120. In my troubles, I cried to the Lord, and he answered me. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips, from a deceitful tongue. What shall be given to you, and what more shall be done to you, you deceitful tongue? Sharp arrows of the warrior with the burning coals of the broom tree. Woe is me, for I sojourn in Meshach, for I dwell among the tents of Kedar. Too long has my soul had its dwelling with those who hate peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. All right, so what we actually did was look at the, the text because there were a couple of words that I wanted to particularly look up. Uh-oh, now I can't find it all <laughs> Psalm 120. 
I'm on the Blue Letter Bible on the internet. And uh, actually, in, uh, in this, uh, in the Blue Letter Bible edition that I'm using right now, um, I actually have a title that they've given. Now, generally, when we are doing this, we are making our own titles. Uh, however, um, we're going to see if I've got this set up in the right place here. The screenshot to show you. I'll pull it down a little here. There we go. It's a prayer for deliverance from the treacherous. And they call it a song of degrees. Well, a song of ascents, a song of degrees, a song of ascents. We, uh, we made note of the difference between lying and deceitful. And uh, Liz helped me so much. Uh, lying is like a bold face, just out, out lie. But deceitful implies some kind of sneakiness, some kind of plotting, planning, deceitful. And then we discussed what shall be given to, unto the, well, let me change this version here to the American Standard Bible. Oops. Which is the one we've been reading out of, not the uh, other one. Okay, not the King James. What shall be given? So that it's not, it's a question of uh, what's going to happen with people Um who have lying lips and deceitful tongues. And here's what the answer is. Sharp arrows of the warrior and the burning coals of the broom tree. And Liz pointed out that the broom tree has big, long spikes too. So um, burning coals of that. Then we looked at this. Woe is me for I sojourn in Meshach, for I dwell amongst the tents of Kedar. And uh, I had to look that up because I'm curious. I'm a curious woman. And uh, in Meshach, so what does that mean? And then so we looked this up. And we discover that Meshach uh, means drawing out. But it's a son of Japheth, who is a grandson of, and he was, a, okay, so uh, Meshach was a grandson of Noah. And he was progenitor of peoples to the north of Israel. So, um uh, all of us who were of European descent happen to be, most of us, uh, descended from Japheth, the son of Noah. And so Meshach was the grandson of Noah. But uh, we learned a little more here, because why was he saying, woe is me? And uh, we find out that they happen to be mentioned with Tubal, Magog, and other northern nature nations, and you can read that for yourself. Okay, so but still, I didn't understand what is, um, what what is so woe is me. Well, uh, then Liz brought up that this is where the Babylonians were as well. So, um, let's go back because there's something else. Meshach, for I dwell among the tents of Kedar. Now, why would that be a problem? So I'm just going to bring that up. Kedar means dark. But here's what it says. A son of Ishmael, the descendants of Kedar. So Kedar was a son of Ishmael. That's who he was. So in the tents of that. So, oh, I see it says, it uh, means dusky of the skin or of the tent. Uh, also, the Bedouin, were, that's who it's talking about. So it's talking about black tented, the Arabians, and, and also, oh, okay. So this is, and we know that uh, uh, with the sons of Ishmael and Isaac, there have always been... Um, problems going on ever since then. Okay, so back I come here. Oops, wrong one. All right. For uh, too long as my soul had its dwelling with those who hate peace, I am for peace. But when I speak, they are for war. And I do believe we picked up our, our uh, 
discussion here. So I'm just going to leave you with that now <laughs> and try and splice these or put these in order afterwards. Sorry about the confusion. See you next time.